The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 14th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four ship, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time, it's uh, 7 past 11. And thank you so much for doing that. We'll certainly make today's show as pertinent as we can for you. And if you aren't listening live, well, we would love to hear from you. A couple different ways to do that. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't give us a call... But you still have a question, you can send me an email. You send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And then, of course, if you are inside our Tiger's Den, and why aren't you? But if you are, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, i got a bit of a mixed bag out there. You've got uh, Dow Futures up nine points. S&P futures back two, NASDAQ futures off 21, and the Russell futures are up one point. Over in Asia last night, all markets uh, mean and green, three and a quarter points for the Nikkei to the upside, 853 points, nearly 2% for the Shanghai, one and a quarter percent basically for the Hang Seng. Over in uh, Europe this morning, the DAX is up 125 points and the FTSE is up 62. Gold is back $15, trading out at 1661. Silver's off 25 cents, trading at 1866. Platinum is up uh, six bucks. Uh, copper is uh, basically flat out there. Lights recruit up a buck buck fifty six. She's trading out at eighty seven fifty five. Natural gas off nine cents. Six sixty five is the print there. Thirty year Treasury is up nearly one point. Trading out at one twenty five seventeen. U S dollar index again. There is a, a ten minute delay on my U S dollar index chart out here. It's uh, trading up eighty one cents. Trading out at one thirteen oh seven. Okay. So you know what we'll do here. Um, let's do this. Let's just do a quick um, use use our, our market update, our nine panel market update. Just give you kind of a good overview as to what different instruments are doing, what they're communicating to us. So we begin by taking a look at the ES mini that's in your upper left hand corner. What we know about that, and you'll see a yellow line at thirty five seventy one seventy five. That was the low of that bullish engulfing candle from October the third that had formed a buy the D point pattern. That is support. Yesterday, price tested support. The body of the candle is the essence of price. Those wicks or shadows, up or lower, nothing more than the screaming memes of that bar. So we take a look at the open, the close, and obviously we've got the high and low. So that level of support was tested. There's also a new profile. You and I looked at this yesterday. That was down, uh, that profile level is uh, support, that is, is at 35, 65, 50. So that too held. Now, where we're at right now is resistance for that new profile. So the sellers are lined up inside the ES Mini at 3693. The high so far today has been 37.15. Uh, yeah, 37.15. So the key area out here for the ES Mini is going to be 36.93. If price closes above it today, well, you need a second close on Monday above it to then suggest that we've got a breakout. But even if you get a close today, it's a pretty good hint based upon yesterday's uh, additional by the D point bottom signal, as well as a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So the black charts don't show those patterns. Uh, but uh, trust me, they're there. We'll take a look at them, I'm sure, on other charts out there. Does it matter if we've got two bottoming patterns uh, versus um, versus one? Actually, for the ES Mini, the question is, is it uh, better to have three bottoming patterns? And the answer is, I don't know. 
to one bottoming pattern basically works. But you've also got wave number seven. That's not shown here. That's what was uh, kicked into gear yesterday as well. And as long as you don't have a lower low today, that would uh, confirm that pattern. So a close above 36.93. Why don't you get right to it, Stevie? A close above 36.93 will then suggest a run up to 38.70. 38.70 is the top of the new weekly profile. Now, the issue here or the uh, the fight is going to be that spot volatility next, which is still well above its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is at 27.99. So even though we've got what looks like a bullish move out here, there's still going to be a lot of battles um, and uh, probably some rug pulls out here. And that will remain in effect until that spot volatility gets below and closes below its 50-day exponential moving average. In the case of the NQ, well, the NQ, that yellow line at the 10, 8, 90, 75 level was also the bullish engulfing candle from October the 3rd. Now, price closed below that on the 11th. That was about four trading sessions ago and then on the following session as well. Now, yesterday, um, so that negated its buy the D point pattern. Yesterday's bullish reversal candle confirmed both a buy the D point and a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, and it too has a new profile. And the top of its new profile, the resistance level where sellers are located is 11,231.75. Support, 10,733.75. So a close above 11,231.75 would suggest a further move higher. Now that further move higher would take us back to the prior highs out here or should take us back to the prior highs in the 11,729 area. And if price can clear that, then you'd be looking at a move to the 12,404 area. U.S. dollar index, that's on uh, row number two, panel on the uh, very left-hand side. You can see price right now is consolidating with inside its new weekly profile. And that's between the range of 111 to 113.99. Gold. Gold yesterday. So here's what we know about gold. Gold was in breakout mode. It began the breakout mode on October 3rd. When price closed above the top of its daily profile, it then had a follow through session and closed above it again. That told us we were in breakout mode. Then on the trading day of uh, October the 7th, the new daily profile forms and it was below price, which is a bullish message. It's a bullish message as long as price stays above the top of that profile. But that profile was also below the prior profile, telling us of a trend to the downside out there. Well, counter trend moves. If it was just a counter trend move to the downside, would find support at the center of that bearish structured profile. That's at 1668.80. And in essence, yesterday it did that. Now, today we're trading below 1668.80. Uh, that always opens up the door for a run to the bottom of the profile. That's at the 1645 level. The old contract still has a TD nine count bottom that is in effect. If you take a look at silver, really trading between trend line support and trend line resistance and consolidating with inside its uh, daily and the weekly profiles out here. Uh, silver right now um, may be testing that rising trend line. Needs to go further to the downside in order to accomplish that task. Can we take a look at light sweep crude? Big wide ranging. A daily profile that formed uh, this week it wrapped around the prior profile that is a, um, a that delivers to you and I a message of a consolidation and that is in essence what uh, Lightspeed Crude is doing you got a nice buy the D point pattern inside of uh, natural gas but it too has a new profile resistance there seven dollars and one penny Steve Rhodes with TFNN we'll be right be right back inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Back up, folks. Let's go to our first question. We've got three that have come in, uh, so we don't want to get behind on uh, those. And, of course, I'd love to hear from you as well, folks, uh, 877-927-6648, or you can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. And, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do, just like uh, G-Man who wants to take a look at the Microsoft. But we're first going to begin with the question that came in from Hector and the fuel injectors. And Hector wants to take a look at the U.S. dollar index, which is what we've got up on our screen right now. And the U.S. dollar index is trading above all resistance levels. Levels. Hector's question goes like this. Happy early bird, fantastic Foster's, Frosty Foster's Friday. That's a mouthful out there, but back at you, my friend. Two questions. First, we believe the king, the dollar, uh, short term topped on September 29th. Is that valid? So let's go switch over to my white background charts. Let's first answer that question for Hector and Patty. The white background charts here on a daily time frame are going to show that I, and I'll just expand out the chart. And this shows that on the trading day of September 28th, September 28th, um, you identified September 29th. So uh, maybe maybe we're kind of looking at the same day, I hope. But September 28th, uh, if you take a look at this daily time frame chart, what you will see out here, one, you'll see wave number seven, that's letter G. That could often be a top. Second, though, and more important, perhaps, is you'll see a Rhodes momentum indicator top out there. And so, yes, you have a, and that was with that bearish engulfing candle. So that's just your resistance here. Hector and Patty and everybody else in the audience out there, resistance now is that high. And that's at 114.745. If price is able to close above that, it negates that pattern, tells us that we're headed higher. So that was the first question. Is that valid? The answer is absolutely. Second, please work a 15-minute and 30-minute chart. What time today will the king head south? Thanks and have a great weekend. Well, now that piece of it, let's go take a look at the uh, short-term time frame charts. You specifically wanted to look at a 15-minute and a 30. Okay, well, let's take a look at the 30 because that one I've got right here. So let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index on a 30-minute time frame. What do we know about it? Well, what we can see here is we can see an A to B equals C to the upside. You got an evening star candle formation at 6 o'clock this morning. That resulted in a pullback towards the oscillator and change line which had recently changed colors. It didn't actually hit it per se, but uh, you've got a bullish uh, outcome here. Price uh, closed above on a 30-minute basis that we came in 8 o'clock above 
that sell the D point pattern, that evening star. So that's bullish. So what the U.S. dollar index should do, Hector and Patty, is go target its TD nine count breakdown areas. Now the breakdown area that it's likely target is one thirteen point four one five. That would be the level that you would be looking. There's no pattern that I see out here at this stage of the game as price gets up to that level. But getting to a breakdown resistance area can be a top. So you'll want to watch the 113.41. I say can be a top. If price closes above 113.41, that tells you that this is headed higher. Now, we'll just change the 30-minute chart here into the 15-minute. Now, the oscillator and change line is going to remain for the 30-minute time frame here. So let's go ahead and get this populated. Will that matter? I'm really just looking here for some kind of a top. So on a, so I'm not going to, well, let's actually do this correctly for Hector and everybody else. So let me, give me, give me a moment here. I just have to adjust the oscillator and change line, changes to a 15 minute time frame uh, now here, and uh, we'll have the correct one. So here's what we know about the U.S. dollar index for its 15 minute time frame. One, this thing negated its TD9 count top, and it did that at 545 this morning. Even though that happened and it suggested a strong momentum move to the upside, price found resistance at the top of a 15-minute profile, pulled back and found support at the bottom of that profile. You're above it right now. But there's the threat here. The threat is, one, you've got a wave number seven top that is in place. And if uh, in the next eight minutes price does not uh, move above 113.16, that would be a short-term top. And you could get a bearish reversal candle here. That would give you a roads momentum indicator top. Now, price is dealing with and is just above the top of that daily profile, and it's above its green oscillator and change line. Hector and Patty, you know the game plan here. Price must close below a green oscillator and change line if you've got a top to suggest there's any kind of traction to the downside. But don't forget, 112.62 was already tested this morning, held as support. That is your key area of support. If price can get below that on a short-term time frame, then it would target its breakout level. Again, this is the 15-minute chart. shows different patterns than the 30 minute time frame chart. And then the area that you'd be watching is 112.25. So you need to see it close below 112.25, the TD nine count breakout area to suggest the, that the uh, king is headed south, which is really what you were looking for. So that's the 15 minute charts and the 30 minute charts here for the US dollar index. And I hope that that uh, helps you out. Now I just need a little bit of housekeeping here. Let me get that back in order uh, so that uh, the next time that I come up to that chart, I don't have to. Look at that as line and say, what the heck is going on there? So let's just change that back to a 30-minute time frame. So again, Hector and Patty, thanks so much for writing in. You have a fantastic weekend as well. So I need to close this chart out, and I need to make one change to my system with regard to the data. So the data flow that I get from my white background charts um, is uh, that I typically use is coming from uh, DTN out there. But I don't, I have not paid for the uh, premium to get the U.S. dollar index. So I have to go to my e-signal data feed to make that happen. Uh, and that just takes a, a quick adjustment out there. And now that quick adjustment has been restored. Now we can get back to, uh, now we can get back to, to live program. No, just kidding. So what do we have up there as a screen? You've got the black background or the white background screens. Okay, great. So let's go to our second question. The second question out here is coming in from Alton. Alton writes and says, good morning, Steve. I hope you're doing well. I am, thanks. Hope you are, as, hope you are too. Uh, I got a question regarding platinum. It has been in a, it's been in this trading range from around eight to 9.40 for a while. So let me do this first here. First, let's, um, platinum is the January contract, if I'm not mistaken. This is just off the top of my head. Uh, you hate off the top of your head because, uh, you know, top of your head, you can make some mistakes out there. And plus, you know, when you're balding a little bit, that's not good to look at. But platinum, let me just make sure. Yeah, it is a January contract. So let's change these sets of charts here to the uh, January contract for platinum. Let's see what pulls up. And while that's going on, I just want to see if on my black background charts, I've got any of the platinum charts up. Um, where do I? Yeah, I guess I do have. Yeah. Let me do this here. No, okay, so that's that's not what I was looking for. All right, so with regard to platinum, the first thing that Alton is pointing out is he sees a trading range between 8 and 940. So with regard to platinum, what I can share with you is the weekly profile levels, which is really what I think you're identifying here, Alton, even though you didn't identify them, so, for, so to speak, as profiles. You may not have access to them. But at 831.20, is the bottom of the bullish structured weekly profile for platinum. The center is at 853.90. 
and the top is at 922.30. So I would say you're dead on balls accurate with regard to identifying that um, trading range. And now you know that it's uh, the weekly set of profiles that are containing price, both for buyers and sellers. So now the question goes, do you see it breaking in the upside, to the upside, regardless of what the dollar does? Thanks much for taking your time to answer my questions. Congratulations. Welcome to the newest member to your family. Thank you. That's been a good, uh, good week for sure. And uh, have a good one. So now the question is, do we see it breaking out? Well, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart up here, we'll try to do this. We're about to go to a break. A breakout signal, Alton, would come with a close above its TD9 count breakdown area. That's at 942.10. 942.10. We come back to this chart. We'll finish taking a look at Platinum for Alton. And then we'll go on to uh, G-Man and watch take a look at Microsoft. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, the uh, during that breakout there, the uh, challenge flag was thrown on the uh, field. So we had to go to instant replay out there. And the challenge was, are you sure, Steve, that uh, all that uh, Platinum needs to do is close above 942.10 in order to signal a breakout? And upon further review, the answer is uh, no, that is not the case. You see, there is actually a TD9 count top that formed here from Platinum. So that makes that high, and that high is the high from August the 11th out there. Alton, that's one you want to be paying attention to. And that price point is 975.50. Now, your question was, do I see anything to suggest this is going to break out to the upside or the downside? And the answer is no, I don't have that. But if price does close above that August 11th high, then you'll have your answer that price is getting ready to break out to the upside out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to uh, write in and uh, glad that I was able to pass along the proper information to you. The next question coming from my G Man, and G Man wants to take a look at Microsoft. MSFT is the uh, ticker symbol. Now, 
big day yesterday for Microsoft and really most every instrument out there, not every instrument, but most every significant instrument out there, and Microsoft is uh, no different now. What Microsoft didn't do, technically speaking, is generate a bullish reversal candle to confirm that uh, Rhodes meant an indicator bottom out there. So, uh, and what Microsoft is doing, as you can see right now, G-Man, it, it does have a battle up ahead. And that battle is going to be the uh, bottom and the center of its daily profile. Now, in the pre-market right now, and as of 8.31 in the morning, let's see where Microsoft is uh, trading. MSFT, last trade, firing up at 233.99. So the key level or the key battle, gee, man, that Microsoft needs to deal with is going to be those profile areas. The first one being 237.13. The second one being 241.08. 241.08 is really the key area that you'd be watching. And the reason is that was a bullish structured profile. If the move in Microsoft is something other than a counter trend move to the upside, then price will close above 241.08. But if it's not, that's where price will find resistance. Now, if price can close them up 241.08, you then have another battle, and that's at 246.34. And then, if price can close above that, then the real fireworks will begin at 260.40. That's the TD9 count breakdown area, and I suspect that's where the real resistance would reside inside of Microsoft. Now, on a weekly basis, the week will end today. Duh. Great news there, Stevie. Bar number eight is likely to form today. In order for bar number eight to form today, price must close below, I'll give you the number, 244.74. Now odds favor that's a likely outcome, but even if that does happen out there, what uh, is likely not to happen, well I don't know if it will or it won't, but next week what price needs to do in order to for a TD9 count bond to form on a weekly basis, price must close below 237.92. Now, is there an A to B equals CD to the downside that a bullish hammer candle, such as the one that's shown right now, but will not be confirmed until the end of the day? Is there an A to B? Whoops, where'd that come from? That was weird. Uh, here's the A to B line out there. And let's just move that over to the C point. And there's the C point out there. But that's not really much of a retracement, I don't think. Um, but uh, I'd have to go back and take a look at it on the, uh, I'll do it on my other charts. I can do that here real quickly. Let me get Microsoft. You're not going to see it on your screen. But I, what I'd like to see is a retracement of at least 0 0.382 retracement. So, um, oh, I see. If I pull this back further, there we go. Okay. Thank you, Stevie. So, yeah, is this? It, I, I guess there's a small A to B equal CD to the downside. So that would look like this one. So that goes from about here down to that uh, wave number seven bottom. And then we'll take that over. So, yeah, okay, so on a weekly basis, if we do, comfortable now, if we do get a bullish reversal candle, if we do get a hammer candle at day's end, you can get a bullish engulfing candle as well this week. So if you do get that on a weekly basis, so Microsoft on the weekly time frame would have a bottom signal out there. And on the monthly time frame, of course, that doesn't end until the end of the month, Halloween time frame, you do have bar number nine. So Microsoft is suggesting to us that it does want to try to rally. Maybe this is telling us that we're going to get a rally that lasts for a little bit of a while out here. And uh, But your next move, your next resistance level, G-Man, watch that, 237 and 241.08 specifically. That's going to be the real key level that uh, likely releases the information uh, to you. Now, Microsoft, as I mentioned, was trading uh, just a little bit lower out there. Now, that's not a surprise. Why is that not a surprise, Stevie? It's not a surprise because we can see as Microsoft's day ended yesterday, it was bar number nine that formed. And the asset earn change line is at 231.97. Now, you're trading at 234 right now. But if price does pull back and test and rejects that oscillator and change line, that would be a bullish outcome. And that bullish outcome then would suggest that price would make a run for the 248.94 level. So that's Microsoft. We take a look at the 30-minute, uh, the daily, the weekly, and the uh, monthly charts out there. G-Man, thanks so much for the request. Hope that provided you with all the information you were looking for. Now, as I look to my email system out here, I don't see any other requests. And I do not believe there is anything inside of the Tiger's Den. So let's, uh, uh, if there is something you want me to look at, uh, please go ahead and uh, post that. So let's do this here. Have we gone through any of the detail of the equity future contracts. I don't believe that we have. So why don't we begin that process now? And let's be, let's do the live play-by-play. -play. Let me see where, there's my screen here. That uh, So when I say the live play-by-play, -play, well, we've got the ES Mini that's, uh, that uh, charts are posting to the screen here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over 
a 30 minute uh, TAS market breath, uh, um, graph chart out here. And what we can see is as we speak at 8.36 in the morning, there are 30 instruments trading above the top of their 30 minute profile, 34 below. So it's got a bearish tone to it from a TAS market breath standpoint. So that's under 30 minute time frame. Let's go take a look at what's going on on the larger time frames. Larger time frames being hourly, 240, and then daily and weekly. And let's again, let's stay with the S&P 5. Oh, that was the NASDAQ 100. Shoot. Let's do this. Sorry about that. That was the NQ that we're looking at. I guess I should have realized that when I said the numbers out there. And I said, let's look at the S&P 500. So boom, bang, voila. This will be populated here momentarily. So now we've got 116 above the top of their profiles and 153 below the bottom. We just had this crossover. This crossover just formed at specifically um, 8.25 this morning. Uh, so if we take a look at, now let's go take a look at the larger time frames, see what they're doing. The next larger time frame, that was 30 minute. Let's go take a look at this for the S&P 500. Nope, that's for the NASDAQ. This is now for the S&P 500. So we got daily 240, daily 240 and 60, all in bullish mode out there. So what this is suggesting to you and I right now, when I say bullish mode for the 240, for the 60 minute, for the 60 minute chart, 141 above profile, 36 below bottom. What this is suggesting is it says for the ES mini, what you should look for is uh, look for some type of bottoming signal on a 30 minute time frame since it has the bearish tone to it so far. And as we pull open the 30-minute uh, time frame here for the ES Mini, where would that be? So no pattern. Now, this would be ideal. Don't know if it will happen. But ideally, you'd get an A to B equals CD to the downside. And that would look something like this out here. Here's your A to B point. We'll just move that over to the uh, C point out there. Now, that only would take us down to about the uh, 36 47 area but what we do is just give us a pattern here you'd look for the bullish reversal candle because it may not be more it may do more than a one to one a to b equals cd pattern you look for the bullish reversal candle that would generate the gartley buy pattern and that would be your entry into a long position in the es mini if you believe that uh, what we've got here is a sustained a sustained rally it could just be a two-day rally um but that's what i would be looking for at this stage here i don't see any pattern on a 30-minute time frame other than maybe price just simply Pulling back to test the bottom of support, which is at 36.65 out there. So this is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. With regard to the rest of the charts out there for the uh, ES Mini, it's really going to be all about the top of that daily profile today. And again, the top of that daily profile for the ES is at 36.93. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. 
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We are recording today's show early. It's 8.42 in the morning. Uh, currently, you've got the U.S. equity futures trading to the upside. Dow's up uh, 61 points. S&P's up 6.5. NASDAQ is up 14. Uh, E-mini Russell's up uh, 5. Uh, all the markets over in Europe are trading higher this morning. In Asia, the primary ones that we looked at closed higher. Gold's off 16 bucks. Silver's down 27 cents out there. And we're looking at the charts here for Walgreens Boot Alliance. That's uh, Dan the Man Levitan who wrote in, and Dan uh, F. writes in, he says, uh, Steve, what's an entry point for Walgreens Boots, WBA, and also AHA? That's uh, Dan from New York uh, City out here. So, Dan, we've got the charts for Walgreens up on our screen. If price today moves above, closes above 34.01, that's yesterday's high, um, then likely price is going to head to 36.31. Now, I bring up that 34.01 level because you're asking for an entry price. And as we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, as it ended to yesterday's activity, it was wave number seven. That's letter G. That's been confirmed. It was also a Rhodes momentum indicator top. But what price also did, even though you've got that top, and uh, price is trading with inside quite a wide range profile out here for a 30 minute time frame. Uh, what we also have was price finding support at its oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is 33.62. In pre market trading right now, the last trade here traded out at 33.74, so price is above that. See, yesterday at uh, 9 o'clock uh, or, or the day before, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you got a TD9 count bottom out there. That was really your entry point. So we don't have, so what you're looking for here is if we, if this top can hold, now that high is 3401. So that would tell us if you see a 30-minute uh, close above 3401, this top did not hold. That pattern was negated and price likely going to hit higher. And then you don't have a bottoming pattern to get you into the trade. You're asking what's an entry point. And ideally what you'd do is you'd look for some type of bottoming pattern or signal. In the case of Walgreens Boots, that would be a retracement perhaps back to the 3199, 3221 level. If price does close above that uh, high from yesterday, 3401, then you might just have to take the trade, hold your nose, jump into the deep end, and uh, with price likely then targeting next, 3631. Now, on a weekly time frame, if price can close above the uh, its red oscillator and change line, 3330, that would be a bullish outcome, and that would suggest a run up to the 3734 or 3811 area out there. So that's what I would be looking at, Dan when you take a look at Walgreens boots out there. So watch how it trades this morning. Right now in the pre-market, we're not getting any kind of signals that that uh, Rhodes momentum indicator top for the 30 minute is uh, taking hold just yet, but it has not failed either. Your next request was AHH. So let's go ahead and get those screens uh, posted up here and let's uh, go ahead and see what it is communicating to us. I'm assuming you're looking for an entry point for that as well. And that is Armada Hoffler out here had a nice big wide-ranging uh, bar yesterday it has a TD9 count bottom 
out here. And if price can remain above the top of its profile, the top of its profile is at that 1026. That's the daily time frame. That then is going to suggest that price might want to make a beeline for the 1253 area. 1253 is the daily TD Nikeout breakdown area. Now, before price would get up there, you've got resistance at the weekly red oscillator and change line, currently printed at 1194. Do we have any kind of a bottom here for the weekly time frame? Well, you could get a key reversal bar this week. In order for that to happen, you need to see price move above, not close above, but move above last week's high. And last week's high was $11 even Steven. Now, in the pre-market out here, let me see if this thing is even trading, AHH, the last trade, nah, not really, uh, so uh, 1084, so we don't have any kind of information there. So uh, if, you, uh, if you get that key reversal bar on the weekly base, then you've got to buy the D point pattern, and price would be above the top of that daily profile, and that would then suggest moving higher. Now, here's the deal. On a 30-minute time frame chart for AHH, this does have a TD nine count top. That pattern is going to complete at nine, at ten, at ten a.m. Why? Because the TD nine count top high can form on the bar following bar number nine. Right now, the high of that count is bar number eight. But you do have a valid TD nine count top. That should take price back to support. Support here would be the daily oscillator and change line ten seventy three. If that were to fail, then support would be ten sixty six. If that were to fail, then it'd be between the ten fifty two to ten fifty seven area out there. So that's how you'd uh, you know, put this together, pay attention to it. Hard for me to anticipate what price is going to do. I know what to be looking for first. And if you got a test rejection of that green oscillator and change line, that would be an entry point and a bullish signal for ticker symbol AHH. So Dan, the man, Levitan from New York City, thank you so much for taking the time to write in. Have a fantastic Friday and a fantastic uh, weekend. And thank you for calling the fabulous Friday show out there. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, no other questions that I see at uh, Goldman Sachs, if you have time. And that's from Inno inside the Tigers. Any natural gas there from Coder. Coder, you were first. So uh, we'll go to uh, natural gas first. So let's take a look at natural gas, pull up the uh, charts. Let's actually get those populated. We got natural gas. We are in the November contract. I think uh, we'll change to December. Maybe it is next week. Not going to worry about that today. We're still in the uh, November contract for natural gas, which does have, by the way, Coder, it's got a nice uh, buy the D point pattern out here. We'll open up the daily time frame chart, and you can see it was more than a one to one A to B equals C D. That was confirmed on both October the 4th, and it was reconfirmed yesterday. Now, yesterday, we have a brand new daily profile. And so when we take a look at natural gas, it's con it's consolidating, we'll call it that, with inside that daily profile coder. The support level is at uh, 639, and the resistance level is 701. So you wouldn't mind UNG ETF for natural gas, which we can put up. Yeah, I've got the November contract up here for natural gas. But this is what you really want to be paying attention to versus the UNG chart. So we really want to understand what's going on in the future. So you've got that bottom out there, price above its oscillator and change line. It should go target the $7 and uh, one penny mark. Now let's take a look at what the other charts are communicating to you and I. Here we can see in the five-hour time frame chart, we can see a consolidation between TD nine count breakout support at 641 and TD nine count breakdown resistance at the 704 area. 704, also 704 is a resistance level on the 240-minute time frame chart out there. Uh, what else do we have intraday wise? 30 minute time frame. Let's just see what we have here, Coder. Price forming a TD9 count top. It does that at uh, 2.30 yesterday afternoon. Uh, so now what we've got is price below a profile. So this could be suggesting that on a 30 minute basis, that either you've got an A to B equal CD to the downside that's trying to form out there. That would look like this, Coder. Your A point obviously being the high from the uh, bar number A to the TD9 count. There's our A to B. I'm just going to take this line, if it's okay with you, move that over to the C point, and uh, that would give us a one-to-one -one price projection around 650 or so. What you'd be looking for, if this is the pattern that is unfolding, if you're looking to get in or you're just looking to try to manage or understand what it's doing, it being the 30-minute time frame chart, uh, when price gets down there, if price does get down there, what you're looking for is a bullish reversal candle. That would then create the Gartley buy pattern. But remember, $6.76, that's going to be a key resistance level. That was tagged before and that held as resistance, and so that would be the real key battleground. That's on the 30-minute time frame chart. So the daily, nice bottom, 
You got a new set of profiles out there. Uh, again, support at 639 and 702. Now we're going to a breakout here. What I'm going to do for you coders, I'm going to put the UNG charts here. They're going to populate, so you'll be able to see those. And there, from there, you'll be able to write down the TAS market profile levels or the oscillator and change line, anything that you want. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Goldman Sachs. I'll make sure that's what's on your screen. Yes, it is a daily time frame. And uh, it was just a question, I think, just to take a look at it. So Goldman Sachs is consolidating. The consolidation is on the uh, monthly time frame chart out there. And that's between 291.32 and 358.73. In a shorter term time frame, yesterday price closed above the top of its daily profile, 305.09. It's trading at 306.99 right now. As long as price remains above that, it suggests to move up to the 315 level. Now, you've got resistance on the weekly chart at 310.15. So if price can overcome the 310.15 level, then you're off to 315. If you can overcome 315, you're on your way to 329. And if you can overcome 329, you're on your way to 345. Whew. But that's what the uh, charts for Goldman Sachs are doing out there. I'm not really sure that there's much else that I can provide to you. Uh, so um, so we'll just leave it like that. Uh, SNP want to take a look at IQNQ. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, populate uh, those charts out there. See if we can get that out here. You've got uh, yes, many futures have just jumped, or, or maybe they jumped a few minutes ago. I see they're trading up 37 bucks uh, right now. So we got rally on um, IQNQ. Wow, I'm not getting anything out there. I must have written that symbol down. I O N Q. Thank you. I O N Q. 
So let's see if we get that populated out there. Thank you, my wing man, my wing man, SNP out there, I-O-N-Q. Come on, populate. It says it's loading. There we go. So what do we have here? What do we have here? I, I don't see anything that pops out of my head other than the daily profile uh, providing support yesterday. And as long as price remains above 511, you should see a run up to the 545 or 585 level out there. The weekly time frame just shows sideways consolidation, new profile out there as well. I don't see anything much more than that, uh, SNP, so I do hope that that helps you out. And just to end the show here, let's go back to those black background charts so you can see clearly where the battles are today. The battles are the daily profile levels. If you take a look at this right now, you got the ES Mini trading above the top of its profile, 36.93. The NQ getting ready to take on the top of its profile, 11.231.75. The uh, Russell taking on the top of its profile, 17.57. And the Dow's got its work cut out for it. It's trading into its bearish structure profile levels. That's between 35.45 and 31.256. Watch the ES, the NQ, and the Russell. You close above those daily profiles today, we probably have a rally that lasts for a little while. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Have a fantastic weekend, folks. I'll see you on Monday. Take care. You might think that if you want to be successful,